up here for arms. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey is a two-dimensional platform game developed by Oddworld Inhabitants and published by GT Interactive, now known as Atari Inc. Released in September of 1997 for Sony's home video game console PlayStation 1 and computers running DOS, a platform independent acronym for Disk Operating System, and Microsoft Windows, a remake of the game titled Oddworld New and Tasty, was released in 2014 and developed by the independent video game developer Just Add Water. Just one day, I was working late one night at Rupture Farms. Developed by Oddworld Inhabitants and published by GT Interactive, now known as Atari Inc., Oddworld Apes Odyssey follows the disastrous journey of a Mudokan slave, an oviparous anthropod with blue or green skin, named Abe in his quest to free his enslaved brethren from Rupture Farms, a meatpacking factory, after losing money on its other products, decides to process the Mudokans into new series of meat pies. Abe, whose original name, according to a crowdfunded art book published by Indie by Design titled Abe's Origins, was Abraham Lore. As mentioned before, is a Mudokan. However, his purplish blue shade of skin is distinct amongst his green toned fellows. Chameleon like in nature, Mudokan's skin color reflects their inner mood. Abe's blue skin is representative of his sadness for his race who's been enslaved. Besides his sewn together lips, dumped so by his mother Sam as a way to prevent him from crying when he was a child, and subsequently being killed for these disturbances, Abe possesses a ponytail which has gone through several changes through the series, with it more so resembling feathers than the hair in the newest installment, Oddworld Soulstorm. Though at times being gullible and clumsy, Abe is a good-hearted and gentle Mudokan. Although seemingly desensitized from being a slave, as many horrifying concepts don't upset him, an example being when the player accidentally leads a Mudokan to death, Abe tends to react with a mere oops. He is somewhat optimistic and cheerful while also being skeptical of things like the idea of him being the chosen one who will free any form of life that is being oppressed by unethical businesses. But Malik was cool. He had a plan. She? Moloch? Is that his name? I think so. M Moloch, I believe, is an ancient Canaanite deity, not unlike Baal. to make meat munchies <laughs> until the meaches were through. Released in September of 1997 for PlayStation 1 and computers running DOS and Microsoft Windows, Oddworld Apes Odyssey acts as the first installment in a pentology, a compound literature or narrative work that is explicitly divided into five parts called the Oddworld Quintology. Set primarily in Rupture Farms, the biggest meat processing plant on Oddworld, the planet in which the entire series takes place on, with the continent known as Mudos being the stage for the whole quintology. Abe, like most Mudokans, is a slave set to clean floors and process meat for the plant. Late one night, Abe performs his duty as a floor waxer, passing posters on a wall advertising the products the factory makes. Meech Munchies, a meat snack product that was discontinued as its main ingredient, Meechies, are assumed to be completely extinct. Paramite Pies, a meat snack product seemingly shaped like a traditional meat pie that has recently seen a decrease in sales as its main ingredient, paramites, have been hunted to near extinction. Scrab Cakes, magenta cakes with yellow icing and a green interior made of scrab meat, and a new product set to be announced as something new and tasty. As someone who greatly enjoyed the company's previous flagship products, Abe's interest and curiosity got the better of him as he chose to be run on a Gluckin, one of the leading industrial races in Oddworld, with the sheer might rendering all industrial races subservient, board meeting presenting a series steadily declining profit charts, followed by a plan to increase profits, a new product with Mudok on meat. Mudok on Pops, another meat snack product that uses Mudok on meat on a stick in the form of an ice cream pop. In the original version of the game, the logo for the Mudok on Pop is a gruesome picture of a Mudok on head on a stick, something which stands out even more amongst the other posters, which have a more cartoonish style and presentation of the product. 
due to the then Kobe child murders, an event that transpired during the development of Ape Odyssey in Japan during 1997, the gruesome design was only changed originally in the Japanese version of the game, with all Oddworld games releasing worldwide after Ape's Odyssey, then choosing to use a friendlier design, including the 2014 remake Oddworld New and Tasty. Sent into a panic by the gruesome design and the roaring laughter of the Glucken board members' presentation during the meeting, Abe makes a break for the exit and attempt to leave the factory, lest he end up in a meat grinder. In this escape, players can explore the factory in a progressive nature towards the factory's exit while simultaneously freeing enslaved Mudokins. For new players, the buttons on how to do so are unknown until later explained in the story. This plus the numerous easter eggs littered throughout the game's many chapters results in a great sense of replayability. The quality or fact of being suitable for or worth playing more than once, for most players. After escaping the plan, Abe finds himself under the light of a moon, Oddworld has at least two, and notices how a strangely shaped crater fits the shape of his hand. In the original version of the game, released in the West, Abe and his Mudokan brethren possess four fingers on each hand. This, however, was changed in the Japanese version to three fingers. There are two supposed explanations as to why this was done. Four fingers, or showing four fingers to another person, came to insinuate the other member was of subclass, because it had become symbolic of meat packers who frequently had work-related accidents relating to a lost finger. In Japanese culture, a person with missing body features are considered as being individuals shunned by society and nature. More specifically, the Yakuza, a Japanese organized crime syndicate, have a traditional punishment or a way to show sincere apology and remorse to another called yubitsume, translated in English as finger shortening, in which the transgressor must cut his own pinky finger, hence four-fingered hands being a sign of the wizened and often ruthless outlaw. As to which of these is the correct answer is relatively unknown, however the four-finger design finally made a reappearance in the remaster of Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. The third game by Oddworld Inhabitants and the second in the Oddworld Quintology, as well as the remastering of the game in 2014. In sheer autumn revelation, Abe clumsily falls down a cliff into the guidance of Big Face, Umurakon Shaman, with a long mask, who revives Abe and tells him to travel the Monsac Lines, spiritually holy caves of the native Murakons, and partake in a set of trials in Paramonia. A large forest in the sacred home of the Paramites and the now extinct Mudobo tribe, a tribe known for the worship of the Paramite, and Scribania, a desolate region and homeland of both the scrubs and an extinct tribe of Mudokon warriors known as the Mudanchi, a tribe known for their worship of the scrub. After completing these trials, Big Face rewards Abe with two spiritual tattoos which granted him the ability to summon the Mudokon god, Shikru, a creature that has the physical features of both the scrub and Paramite. With this newfound power, the player travels with Abe back into the Rupture Farms. While avoiding security, rescuing enslaved Mudokons, and infiltrating deeper into the factory, the player and Abe reach the boardroom in which the story first began. Using the newly found power of the Sheik rule, Abe attacks the Rupture Farms board members. Once the dust settles and Abe returns to normal, two Sligs, a sentient species that serve as security and personal assistance to the Mongol cartel, a group that consists of any industrial corporation managed and or operated by Gluckons, are dispatched and Abe is knocked out and captured. From here, the game can end in one of two ways depending on the number of Mudokons saved during the course of the game. If Abe rescued at least 50 Mudokons or more, the good ending will play, and Abe will be saved. If Abe rescued at least 50 Mudokons, the bad ending will play, and Abe will be turned into meat. What's happening across the multi-act structure? You had a whole different analysis of what constituted a popular character. So does Mario turn into a good movie? Trust Beginning production in January of 1995, under the same Soulstorm, a name which was later used for the 2021 remake of Oddworld Apes Exodus, the name of the project went through a handful of name changes after GT Interactive acquired publishing rights. The name was changed from Soulstorm to Oddworld Inhabitants Epic One Starring Abe, and later on to Oddworld Apes Odyssey. According to a Reddit AMA, Ask Me Anything, with Lone Lanning, the main director for the series, from December 20th of 2012, the first footage he ever saw of Abe's Odyssey involved a pack of Michis, a creature presumably extinct in the odd world that possessed multiple jaws, tiny forearms, and two hind legs, chasing Abe. Although he was happy with the animation at the time, the studio discovered when development was nearing completion that there was not enough disc space to include all of the species featured in the game, and subsequently Michis were removed from the final game and identified in the stories extinct. 
meaning it was near last-minute change. Another sequence under time and budget constraints concerned the moon that Abe witnesses after his escape from Berkshire Farms and just before the first meeting with Big Face. Originally, according to an episode of Icons, a documentary TV show that aired on G4, which focused on significant people, companies, products, history, and milestones in the world of video games, about the Oddworld series, the handprint embedded in the moon was meant to be formed in front of Abe by a lightning or meteor storm on the moon as a means to convey that there are greater forces that are really behind it that are trying to send him symbols. As the first major GT title that the UK development team, which had recently been taken in by GT following the acquisition of Warner Interactive, became involved with, the testing process of the game was unusual for GT Interactive, as the British UK team did gameplay testing whilst normally American games were only tested in Europe for language and other compatibility issues. Due to this new and odd way of testing, the final version of the game was left with a ledge clipping through the floor glitch, a bug which allows Abe to jump backwards behind screens, also known as the stop turn, which many speedrunners of the game use alongside an invincibility glitch to escape Paramonia and Scrabania, a strat that was first discovered in June 2014 on the Microsoft Windows version of the game. There are of course several other glitches, with a handful that can cause Abe's Mudok on followers not to follow Abe, and some glitches related to levers and manual lifts, resulting in the main mechanic of freeing them and being incredibly annoying and borderline infuriating for most players. Despite these glitches, the game had its first private showing at E3 96, a trade event for the video game industry, during which several journalists in attendance, like Air Hendricks of GamePro magazine, labeled the then-named Project Soulstorm as one of the most dazzling games at E3. With some going as far to say Soulstorm snuck out of nowhere with breathtaking graphics and a fresh approach of platform gaming. A more large-scale unveiling of the game took place a year later at E3 97, under the title Epic One. The version of the game shown during the convention was remarkably similar to the released version despite the original release date of May being pushed back to September. Although according to the Art of Oddworld, the first 10 years, 1994 to 2004, a high quality art book featuring the artistic journey of the game company Oddworld Inhabitants from its first 10 years to 2004, Abe's Odyssey had a smooth development cycle, the production of the game was nearly turned upside down. During a short interview by Nathan of Oddblog from August of 2011, Lone Landing mentions that when Abe's Odyssey was in production, the developers found that an executive at GT Interactive tried to sabotage production by showing footage of the game to his boss because he did not like the game being made. Luckily for Lanning and the team behind the game, the executive's boss actually loved the direction the game was going and chose to provide more funding at the expense of the executive that wanted to shut it down. In the same interview, Lanning explained that during the game's production, the video game industry was seen as making just another set of toys and not something to be taken seriously. Those in the industry were happy to make a living, but they weren't necessarily going out and bragging about it. Anything that broke the mold that was considered a toy or video game was either casted aside as a joke or seen as something that needed to be removed. A big moon was before me, and its face was my paw. Upon its release in 1997, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey received mostly positive reviews, with journalists like Joe Fielder at GameSpot, an American video gaming website that provides news, reviews, previews, downloads, and other information on video games, who wrote in 1997 that it is the ideal platformer, balancing its action and puzzle elements perfectly to make the game intelligent, engaging, and best yet, fun. Across several magazines, the game received a near-perfect score with GamePro, an American multi-platform video game magazine media company, for example, giving a perfect 5 out of 5 for graphics and sound, and a 4.5 out of 5 for control and fun factor, asserting that it bursts into the scene with the kind of unique gameplay and killer graphics that will rocket it straight into the PlayStation Hall of Fame. Though potentially difficult to grasp for most people these days, the graphics struck many reviewers as being excellent in some magazines like PC Zone, the first ever magazine dedicated to games for IBM compatible personal computers in the UK, saying in the reviews of the game that the developers have created an outstanding visual environment for Abe to leap around in. Not only did the graphics entice many players and reviewers, but the imaginative AI and visual designs of these sorted creatures as well. In the same review mentioned earlier by GameSpot, they labeled the AI as going a long way towards making you feel as if you're interacting with an actual world and its inhabitants. 
Since its release in September of 1997, the game has won many awards, including the E3 Showstopper 1997 from GamePro in August 1997 and the Best Director Award at the World Animation Festival in 1997, as well as the Best Voice Acting of 1997 Award by Electronic Gaming Monthly's 1998 Video Game Buyer's Guide. You can still have a lot of fun with this, and it's nice being able to interact with different inhabitants and see how they respond to you. That was my test. Thank you for watching, my name is Ivory, and if you want to know more about me, check out my Twitter at Ivor underscore Y. If you want to play or learn about the game in its entirety for yourself, as well as read or watch the additional content related to the series, you can find links to everything mentioned in the description and pinned comment below. Make sure to hit subscribe and that like button below if you enjoyed the video, as well as leave a comment as to what game series you'd like us to cover for a future video. If you enjoyed this video and would like to not only see them continue but improve in quality, consider supporting us on Patreon. Links in the description below.